As a child, the house made me uncomfortable in a way I couldn't put into words. Now, as a 17-year-old, I knew exactly what those words were. I was afraid of the house. I hoped the key might unlock the front door. It didn't. Looking in, I felt like the house itself had been waiting for me. Crawling through the doggy door used to be a lot easier when I was 11. The power had been turned off the night we left. For the first time in years, I felt like I was home. But instead of a family, there were just memories of one. Like how after Lewis started working at the cannery, we all got sick of eating salmon, except our cat. Molly. Or how only one restaurant would deliver to our house, so we had Chinese a lot. The table was still a wreck from the night we left. It was like a bomb had gone off, killing everyone but sparing the furniture. My mom was the only one of us who could imagine Great Grandma Edie living in a nursing home. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it, like a smile with too many teeth. Even the fireplace had a story. Edie told me the bricks came from the original house after it sank.
Great Grandpa Sven built a music box for Barbara, along with the rest of the house. Mom always told me to stay out of the basement, so I wasn't too surprised when the key didn't fit. A lot of things got left behind in the whirlwind of that last night. After Milton disappeared, Mom sealed up all the bedrooms. Then Edie retaliated and drilled peepholes. I spent a lot of time playing in Great Uncle Walter's room. I think my mom sometimes regretted not sealing it up. Lewis told me there were secret passages, but I never believed him. Turns out, my mom was really good at keeping secrets. Now it was time to find out what my mom had been afraid of. Maybe it sounds like I had a plan. But I had no idea what was behind that door.